CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Bobby Capel. It is time once again to wade into the dirty waters that are the 2016 presidential race. And here joining me this morning, Andre Gillespie, a professor of political science over at Emory University. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. All right. We are talking Hillary Clinton. We are talking Donald Trump. We were talking all things politics on this edition of public affairs here on Peach. Uh, let's start with the polling because things have changed a little bit in the last uh, two weeks since we had you on last. Uh, at that time, it looked like Hillary Clinton was pulling away after the convention. She had gotten a nice bounce from her convention. Donald Trump was tanking in the polls at, the, at that time. Uh, since then, it seems to have tightened back up, which is kind of a natural ebb and flow in this race. What do you make of the polls this week? So it's not surprising that the race would tighten up, especially as we enter the home stretch of the campaign. Um, part of the reason why Hillary Clinton lost her advantage is that she has um, suffered a lot in the last couple of weeks with additional revelations about her emails and attacks that seem to resonate with many people. Uh, but in general, we should expect some volatility volatility in the polls. It seems like this email thing just will not go away no matter what happens. There's always another piece of news coming out, whether it's the FBI leaking interview or not leaking, but yeah, I guess leaking, whatever you want to call it, dropping interviews on uh, the, the weekend before Labor Day there, uh, or, uh, or, or content of the emails themselves. Uh, is this something that's going to continue to drip, drip, drip all the way through Election Day and beyond if she becomes president? I think that it's uh, likely that this is always going to be an issue during this particular campaign. Hillary Clinton's biggest disadvantage is that people don't find her particularly trustworthy, and there's some people who question her judgment, and they use the emails as an example of that. So a lot of these people were already hardwired to not support her um, as president, but because there seems to be this slow drip of information, the Republicans hope to use this information um, as the case to be used against her for people who are on the fence. And Hillary Clinton hasn't handled the issue particularly well. She seems defensive every time it comes up, um, and even though she has apologized for it, the defensiveness actually kind of undermines the sincerity of the apology. So she has to figure out a way to put this issue to rest once and for all, to take ownership and responsibility for the mistake, and to figure out a way to move forward. Donald Trump uh, had this to say earlier this week when it comes to national security and defense. Take a listen. Sometimes it seemed like there wasn't a country in the Middle East that Hillary Clinton didn't want to invade, intervene in, or topple. She's trigger happy and very unstable. Whether we like it or not, that's what's going on. And one of the wars that he is referring to specifically is the Iraq war and the vote to give George W. Bush, the then president at the time, the authority to invade Iraq and topple that regime. Uh, Donald Trump claiming that he was against the war, although he did say on Howard Stern's radio program back in 2002, pre-invasion, that uh, he guessed he supported, I think that was the quote, I guess so, when he was asked if he supported the war in Iraq. Um, is that a a good line of attack for him on Hillary, this trigger-happy Hillary. I heard him say it earlier mm -hmm. this week. Well, he's trying to turn the attack that she's levied against him about his temperament onto her. So if she's going to say that he lacks the temperament to be president, he's going to use foreign policy and the unpopularity of our engagement in Iraq and Afghanistan as evidence of the fact that she perhaps lacks the temperament to be president. And then also seeing that those wars haven't been resounding successes, he wants to implicate her and the Obama foreign policy into failed foreign policy to suggest that there needs to be a change there. There he's trying to attack one of Hillary Clinton's strengths, which is she uh, you know, has an, a distinguished record in terms of public service with respect to foreign affairs. Affairs. And given the fact that Donald Trump has no political experience at all, you would assume that she would have the clear advantage on this particular issue. We are two months out from the actual votes being cast and someone being uh, elected the next president of the United States. Where do you see this race at this point? snapshot in time? So, uh, uh, you know, this race has two very unpopular candidates who actually in some ways cancel each other out. So in that respect, it is not surprising that this race is a tie. Um, I think that's surprising to some people just given the differences in the profiles of the two candidates. But when you have one inexperienced candidate who's bas basically been able to uh, tap into populist sentiment, uh, sometimes tapping into things that we probably don't like about American society, but then we also have a very experienced candidate who uh, has been deeply 
unpopular for much of her public career and who has made some unforced errors in terms of some handling of certain types of situations, we probably shouldn't be surprised that this is a neck and neck race. Let's focus on the state of Georgia for a moment when it comes to this campaign. Typically, Georgia goes Republican mm -hmm. in presidential races uh, most years. In fact, the last time it didn't was when Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, ran for president back in 1992. He carried the state of Georgia, but otherwise it's been pretty much all Republican. There have been some polls out recently that suggest uh, because of Donald Trump's unpopularity with the Republican base uh, that this state could be up for grabs here. Uh, one poll even showed Hillary leading in the state of Georgia. What kind of stock do you put into that? So, I mean, most of the public polls, there hasn't really been a public poll um, in the last few weeks as of, as of yesterday from what I've seen. So that's the one thing to keep in mind is that people change their minds. Um, a lot of the prognosticators, a lot of the political reporters that I know still seem to think that this race is still Donald Trump's to lose in the state. But the big weakness for Donald Trump is given the overheated rhetoric, um, given the rhetoric on race that many people find offensive, that there's a fear that he is going to turn off certain segments of the Republican Party, the party of the Republican Party that doesn't want to be uh, viewed as being racially antagonistic. Uh, doesn't want to um, uh, turn off uh, suburban white women, for instance. And so the fear is, is that that segment of the Republican base may just not show up to vote for president at all, and that that could have an effect not just on Donald Trump's chances of being able to win the state, but also on down ticket races. So if they don't show up to vote at all, that that could have serious consequences for those running for Congress and for Senate. Well, what's interesting is the Clinton campaign has poured some money into this state now. They have brought Ron Allen, a national committee member, down here and put him in charge of the operations in this state, something they didn't really have going um, prior to that. Have you ever seen a campaign where two presidential candidates can't get out of their way more than this? I mean, this is uh, an unprecedented race. I think we're living in particularly extraordinary times, and these candidates um, are extraordinary in terms of their personas, but also extraordinary in terms of their detractors. So, um, you know, this has been a really interesting race. At the end of the day, I think it comes down to turnout, and which operation can actually get the most people to turn out to vote is going to be the one that wins. All right, thank you very much, Andra. More to come with Andra after this break here on this Campaign 2016 edition of Public Affairs on Peach.